Oh, shit. Look out, Tom. Look out. Don't mind my hand. He'll so, take that out in post. No, I won't. Probably. I'm not even going to fucking edit any clips tonight. Phantasm so 2. 2. Uh, this one doesn't have like a, a another title, right? It's just Phantasm 2. Phantasm 2. <laughs> Never mind. Farewell to the flesh or, you know, <laughs> something like that. The, yeah. None of that. It, it's Phantasm 2, a lover's warm embrace. Yeah, so I hadn't seen this one since I saw it in the theater when it first came out. Um, so it's been a while. Been a while. Uh, the last movie, Phantasm, ended with what? Like a dream sequence? Or it's all a dream, but it's not. Because the tall man was there hanging over old Michael's bed and shit. Like about to take him and kill him, but... This movie shows that more happened after that. This takes place right after that scene. And Reggie, he's fighting the Jawas. You know, the Jawas have come into the house and he's like, I don't know, going to blow up the house is the only way to get rid of them. <laughs> you know, so they do. See, reasonable. Yeah, and they fight off the tall man. He gets Michael out of there and the house blows up. And the end. The end. <laughs> Mike's been in the in the old asylum <clears throat> all the time, and he's had plastic surgery while he was there because he looks completely than he did. Of course, it's been a few years, so yeah, he's changed a bit. But yeah, they got a different guy to play Michael this time. Why? Tom could tell you because he's listened to all the commentaries, he's read all the magazine articles. Why did they replace old Michael, Tom? Because Universal was giving them money for this one, you see. And they wanted an actual actor to be in the movie. They let Mike audition, and I'm pretty sure Reggie had to audition to play Reggie as well. But uh, they did not pick Mike. They went with fucking Jack Foreman or whoever the fuck this guy is, whose name I have no idea what it is. But uh, he does look a lot different than uh, old Mike and uh, the gentle fellow who plays Mike in part two. I can't remember seeing this motherfucker in anything else ever. Mm -hmm. But uh, he stands out as fucking a very recognizable guy because... Uh, he played Mike in one out of five Phantasm movies, and that's fucking weird. So, yeah, while he's been in the asylum, he's having visions or, or some shit about some blonde chick that is not the blonde chick movie. It's just some random blonde chick, I guess. That uh, I mean, they're fucking mutants now, and they're linked telekinetically. Yeah, she needs his help. You know, because uh, the tall man is coming for her or something. I, I don't know. But anyway, he's done his time at the asylum. He's given his walking papers. And uh, <laughs> he meets up with Reggie. The asylum for children who are almost molested. <laughs> right. So they're but driving, it was all a dream. They're driving he was back to just so house. disappointed that he was never molested that he just sunk into a very suicidal, deep depression. <laughs> so he had to be incarcerated at an all-female fucking asylum because he would pop giant boners at the janitors just imagining that, oh, one day they're going to get old and try and molest me. So he'd just fucking sleep with his ass up in the air just waiting to spill applesauce or whatever breadcrumbs he had left over. Like he was stuck <laughs> in the cot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, help me. I'm stuck under my pillow. <laughs> I wish there was an old man to come and fuck me. <laughs> but that never happened, so he was just so depressed and had to be locked away. So they're driving back to Reggie's house, and Reggie's house blows up. You know? <laughs> the end. <laughs> now it's your turn to go to the asylum because now your house blew up but no they decide fuck it let's go on the road trip that we talked about doing before you went to the asylum and uh first let's break into a hardware store 
and build some weapons. Yeah, they're going on the road. And they're going to hunt down the tall man. But, you know, they know that breaking into a hardware store isn't right. Even if the fucking, like, whole town's abandoned because, of, you know, the Umbrella Corporation and the T-Virus. They've they, out of they, their town. they still leave them some money and even a little extra to get their door fixed for mm-hmm. when they come back. So they pay for everything they steal and broke because they are white. And that's what we do. Yeah, the right thing. We just know that, <laughs> hey, these guys just fucked up somebody's business, but they're good guys, you know? Hmm. So they're on the road, you know? They meet some chicks. Reggie gets laid. Um, oh, does he? Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, and this chick, uh, her name's Samantha Phillips. She would go on to be in the Dallas Connection and a bunch of other, like, those Cinemax-type movies that are not quite porn, just have, you know, smattering of nudity here and there. But she got a really weird fucking breast implants. Augmentation. Augmentation. She had some work done, and she looked fucking weird with those tits she got, you know? Um is really it because she wasn't ample yeah. and they had to stretch that skin a little too much so maybe things start looking at the ceiling? Yeah, it's just weird. It's like she's got billiard balls, you know, stuck in her. So it's just weird, you know. It's not like she didn't even go all out and let's just fucking make this obnoxious. Instead, she just like got her made weird. But she would also go on to find success as the producers as the producer of the Busty Cops series of <laughs> what? Which we will review on this show at some point. Uh, the trilogy, or unless they made four of them, they might have made four. But anyway, here she's riding Reggie like a cowgirl. I mean, she's riding Reggie like uh, cerebral palsy may <laughs> be in her gene. It is a very horrible sex scene. Uh, it's very silly. And uh, what goes on from there? More fighting, all men's, more of the, the balls floating around and, you know, projectiles being thrown off, of, you know, because the, the balls will just fucking drain you, uh, drain you. Uh, and there's something that, you know, usually balls get drained. This time it's the balls doing the draining. Weird, weird little uh, thing going on here. Yeah, so... What the Tallmans does is he moves from town to town and sucks them dry, drains their balls. and uh, No, their balls drain them. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, this movie, you know, it doesn't have that dream quality that the first one did, you know, but it, it it's more of like a straight-up horror movie, but it's good. You know, it's a good straight-up horror movie. It's... Uh, they like you said they had more money for effects. Who did the effects in this? I'm almost a hundred percent sure that it was K and B. I think so. I think you're right. And uh, so anyway, they kill off the Tallmans and they jump back in their in the uh, hearse. They're getting away at the with a hearse, and uh, then they stop for some reason. Oh, yeah. Turns out Reggie's chick isn't Reggie's chick. It's the... Again, he's been people. What he does, he disguises himself as a woman, you know, fucks him, and then kills him. But he took his time with Reggie. And uh, Reggie gets out of the car. Tallman kills him. This is the last we'll see of Reggie. I haven't seen part three, four, and five, but I'm sure they're not going to be as good because Reggie clearly dies in this. You know, mm. he's left on the road, and then the Tallmans, we are left to assume. He killed. was left behind. Yeah. We're left to, well, no, he's dead, because he was like, Tallmans, I think, like, fucking punched a hole through his, his <laughs> chest. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, cut his balls off, then drained them. And, uh, and I'm guessing he killed Michael and the blonde chick, and, uh, and the end. You know, it's got a, like, 
evil wins again in this movie. So yeah, I I like it. It's all right. It's not as good as the first one, but it's it's a decent sequel. Yeah, uh, it depends on what day you get me on, but I always go back and forth on which one I like more, this one or the uh, first one. Just depends on which day you get me on because they are two totally different movies. The first one was an independent movie, and uh, I don't want to say... <laughs> The uh, second one was a big budget Hollywood studio picture, but I mean, for a horror movie at that time, it it kind of was. You know, uh, they had offices on the Universal lot and all of that shit. So, uh, I mean, this is a more standard, a more linear, not so what the fuck's going on here movie, except for the fact that uh, they blow the fucking tall man up at the end but then he comes back but that's kind of par for the course joe the effects in here are pretty cool the uh tall man freddy krueger monster that comes out of fucking old what's her nuts uh gene gray's back that's pretty cool but uh yeah i like it as for a sequel goes i think uh being locked up and not knowing what the fuck's real and what's not, having this weird wanting to get molested fetish, and then going on the hunt for, you know, the guy who is trying to molest you is it's pretty good. It reminds me of Hard Candy, Joe. Have you ever seen that? I have. It's, it's about this young boy who's picked up on the internet by this older man, and then uh, this young boy gets his revenge on this older man. And when uh, the young boy shows up, the older man's like, what? I thought that you I was getting a girl. What is this? And he's like, oh, well, come on in. Yep. yep. And then you know what he try, where he tries to go, Joe? He tries to go to fuck town. Mm. Can you believe it? <laughs> to, to fuck town. With this young boy. So one of the things I like most about the first Phantasm was the m music. And they use kind of the same music here, but it's kind of a little bit more hip, you know. They got some elements to it, and uh, it doesn't sound as good. How how did it sound? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, it sounded <laughs> like. Uh, <laughs> that's it <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Pretty good. Fantastic. Yeah, it's uh it's it's good shit. Uh it has the classic line, uh, you think when you die you go to heaven, you come to us, and then the priest pisses himself. I think the uh sphere effect was shot a little better in this one from a better angle. Probably could have done without his ear getting cut off, but I know you gotta you gotta up the ante a little bit. I mm -hmm. think I like this uh, sphere kill. I think I like this sphere kill just a just a little bit better than the one in the first one because you know I think I think the angles on this one is it's is a pretty good and, and shot well. Although in the first one you did have that nice uh, faux mausoleum background, so I mean it's kind of hard. You know you like you like the angles or you like the scenery, but I, you know they did an okay job. Not really making. You know, the interiors of this one look like a church. But there was a priest in it, so I guess it was a church. Oh, do you like side. how they angle them to the side so they can hold the hose <laughs> in a strategic area so the fluids in your body can flow out? Unless you're the Tallmans and then uh, it's yellow fluids, kind of like the top of our of our thing here. Oh shit, I didn't even put two and two together. Mm -hmm. That equals oh, five. Oh shit. So I would recommend this one. I think it's so far we're two for two of these yeah. being pretty fucking good, Joe. 